sense of humor. It's more than that, though. He is quite specific and glorious, isn't he? So I want to go back for a few minutes to uh, 2001, to an encounter there with Gabriel that I have spoken some of. Gabriel let me know in 2001 what would happen starting in 2008. That date specifically is September the 15th, 2008 in a 21-year time frame broken down into seven-year periods. First seven years dealing primarily with economy. The second seven years dealing with government. That brings us, the government part won't end until 2022, somewhere around September. And then the final third year time frame dealing with the combination of religion to economics and government. Now what is playing itself out in front of us now is an economic system run at government level that is being coupled with religion. It's not going to be, it already is. The 2030, 2030 agenda is going to be in place by 2030, they say, is that type system. The Pope is directly involved in it. If you watched recently where the Rothschild lady and the Pope spoke together at the Vatican, it was this combining, read it, you can read it, it was this combining of those three things. What Gabriel termed to me in 2001, here is the number of the beast. It is six, man demonically empowered in economics, government, and religion. Six, six, six. It is a worldwide, I said it this way, Babylonian type system. I'm talking about its economics, firstly. I'm saying all this and bringing it up, some details that I was given, there were a lot of details, this three or four day type encounter, didn't end, started on the 10th of December, did not end to the 14th. So over that time frame, Gabriel was coming several hours a day. Why just several hours? Because that's all I could take was several hours a day. It was simply overwhelming me. Gabriel's presence is not just, oh yeah, he's an angel. Yeah, no, that's not true. He is an angel, but his presence, go ask Daniel and read the book of Daniel, <laughs> overwhelmed Daniel. So much so that he got sick from the sheer presence and all that was being revealed to him. I've been sick several times over this kind of stuff because of the dynamics of the presence and the revelation itself. Now, since 2001, there's been many other encounters, dozens and dozens of them, with the Lord himself, with other angels, with saints. Say, I told you I was going to be open. Including the man Daniel, John, the revelator, and others who wrote, who wrote these things in the scriptures. So I'm being open, aren't I? I must be. I have been commanded to do so. But it's enough that it's in the scriptures. Those scriptures were written by them. And believe me when I say they have understanding of those scriptures, more so now than they ever did. And the Holy Spirit loves to give understanding, particularly of Christ and of times, concerning these scriptures. Both are needed and are happening. How this is coming down to us, here's where I want to come. This is not going to be, it already has begun. No longer is it what I was told in 2001, this is going to happen. It is happening, even now as we speak. I want to convey that to all of us in the room and to everyone listening. It is happening. It will begin and has begun again in economics. It is an economic Babylonian system that is being offered to us. And therein is our first test as a nation. We must reject the economic system as we can already see already. It is tied and will continue to be tied in a growing way to government and to religion. Now the Babylonian system is not the end. 
It is, however, that system that the, what we call, who we call, the Antichrist will come into and take control. It starts again, already has, in economics. Look for an economic system free of the American dollar, free of cash, an electronic system to arise. It already is. It's not going to, it already is. Look for, uh, this is what I was told in 2001, look for this system to arise. Economically, the lure is in economics. Did I say that strongly enough? The lure is in economics. Because coupled with government, you will not be able to buy nor sell, but that it is coupled to government. You have to be a part of that government and under the control of the government. Gabriel told me, that by creating chaos, they take and gain control. They are creating a chaos in the economies of the world. How many have seen it already? They are taking down the small businessman. Tell me that's not true. They are doing it by what they call COVID. It's its intent. Yes, China is involved. So are people in this nation. So are people in other nations. It is a worldwide dynamic, dynamic, but the power, ultimate power behind it is Satan. It's not that there's not a real virus. There is. It's not that they don't want to kill people. They do. And I saw three other, remember? I, the Lord showed it to me, three waves. They're already talking about the next wave. I think they're already saying it's here upon us. That's what the Lord showed me. I talked about this some months ago, if you'll remember. You can go back and listen to it. And with it was the crash of even airplanes in the water, remember? In the waves, I could see airplanes in the water. The crash of the airlines, something Gabriel talked to me about back in 2001, that there would be one airline in this nation. I'm simply bringing up some of the details. I've said it before, talked about it through the years. I'm not afraid of it. My fear is of the Lord. Do I like it? No. Will I be a part of it? No. I'm not taking any mark. <laughs> and the scripture is incredibly profound and specific that that mark will be in your forehead. Isn't that right? Forehead or in names two places. Very two places that are being contemplated or brought forth, put forth now. It is a system of control that they are after. And a system of murder that Satan is after. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. It is that kind of system meant to for people like us who would resist to kill us and get us out of the way or put us in places to where we're out of the way. There is no love in the kingdom of Satan. They will betray each other. He will never, Satan will never fully be successful in this kingdom. I want to give us some understanding. We may already have it. I'm just saying I want to give some of the understanding I have and release it publicly. Satan is not going to be completely successful. He will be largely successful within the confines of his own kingdom upon this earth, which will be a limited kingdom. Is not meant, is not meant, I'm going to say this, as the word of the Lord from going back to the 1600s, I'm going to go all the way back, let's go all the way back to Christopher Columbus in the discovery of this area of the world. And talk about America for a moment, coming forward from Christopher Columbus' discovery of this area this, of the world, this whole new continents that they did not know were there, to America itself and in its beginnings. It was for the worship of God that people came here originally, to be free from government control. 
to be free from religious control of the church. And that God would be their government, and the government that they founded was self-government under God. That does not mean they did not have governors or they did not have leaders, but they had leaders who they knew was first submitted to God because they knew by definition, and they said this in eight points of who is a tyrant, you can go back and read it in your history, that a tyrant is anyone who is trying to govern and rule without God governing and ruling them. <laughs> they put their trust in God. Our forefathers and ladies and said this way. Abigail Adams was strong in this. She was a warrior. Others were as well. Understood. So my point is, we've got to know the will of God about this nation. What is the will of God for this nation? Is the will of God for this nation is not to be a part of the Antichrist system. I've known that since 2001 when Gabriel said directly to me that this nation is meant to be a sheep nation. Well, I'm just laying out some things. So our fight then is going to come in economics. Firstly, it is for economics that it's going to be the great test because if they're forming a system to where you can't buy and sell without being attached to their form of government and their form of religion, and it will start, hear me, it will start in the beast system as a form of religion that has no absolutes, that one form of religion is as good as another. They call that love, and they call that unity, and they call that peace, and God calls it an abomination. <laughs> The Pope is preaching a doctrine of love and unity and peace, and he is an abominable person. He is. I was told by Gabriel in 2001 that it would be the Pope who would declare the Antichrist to be God on this earth. Is it this Pope? I don't know, but there's going to be one of them. I made no bones about this way back, going way back. My Catholic friends in Europe know the truth of what I'm saying. They've heard it. So, I warn us, what we saw with the Pope recently, I mean, he watched what the Pope and the Rothschild lady said. Just that many? No more? You need to watch it. They're already planning it, guys. So it, it's there's its governmental, economic, governmental, religious connotation, but it's going to get more so than that. So, what I want us to understand then is economic test that is upon us. The answer and the solution will be that will be the good of this will be to do away with currencies. It only takes the right system, the right persons, personages to be in control of that system for it to go haywire quickly. Our great test, and I ask you to pray for our leaders who do love God or know God or want to, let's say it this way, want this nation to be free from this tyrannical form of government. I ask you to pray for wisdom, God's wisdom, to understand the temptation of economics. To be in bed with them economically will be to face being in bed with them governmentally and being in bed with them religiously. It is a system that is clearly defined in the scriptures, has been clearly spoken of by God to myself and others over many, many years, including to our founding president, George Washington. And to men of God in that era who understood that it was as I've read history and continue to read history, understood that uh, this nation was not meant to be under the control of the Antichrist. So it is meant to be a refuge nation for God's people and a place where the gospel is two ways that came out in 2002. Okay, I'm jumping, February 2002, to an encounter where I was before the throne of God and the Father sent out waves. He gathered all the saints from this nation who were have gone on to be with the Lord. And this wave, first wave came out from the presence of the Lord. The Lord was standing to my right. And the original intent was in that wave. That original intent was that this was to be a refuge nation for the people of God. 
God's people, not all religions, God's people. Second wave, this was original intent and still is God's intent. Still is. Doesn't mean that we're not going to have discipline. I'm about to talk about that or judgment. We will. But it is redemptive, not wrath. Second wave comes out in light. It says waves of light coming, Gary. All the colors of the rainbow are in the wave. And I'm watching it from the back. I can look down front. You may not believe this. I do. And I can see George Washington right at the front of the crowd. And I'm telling millions, millions of Americans. See him. I talked about this to people in 2002. Nathaniel, my son, was with me when I did it. He was with me in the car when the revelation came. He's back there in the room. I was driving when this happened to Wisconsin. When the Lord comes in upon me and I'm caught up and watching this transpire in heaven, I told Nathaniel, son, would you get out? Hey, Nathaniel, step out for a second, son. <laughs> Didn't I tell you in our Volkswagen Passat Get a piece of paper and write this down. Isn't that right, son? He was with me as we were going to Wisconsin, right to the Madison area to minister. It's a weird thing to be driving and caught up into a heavenly encounter before the throne all at the same time. How many agree with me that I did not advise that? Somebody had control of the will besides me and Nathaniel. It was not a short encounter. So these two waves come out, original intent, and they began, that crowd begins to intercede for God's original intent. Those waves came back, came into me. That's why I understood them. And I watched as the waves went to America. And I saw lights popping on across this nation as intercessors began to pray. And I could hear them praying the very same prayers on earth as it is in heaven. And I turn to the Lord and looked at him, and I asked him, because he's looking at down front, I said, what will it take for this to be brought back to our nation? And he turned and looked at me with those eyes of fire, terrifying me, and yet overjoying me. Sound discipline has been decreed for your nation. That's what he said. In order to bring us back to original intent. The next nation up was Israel. I watched as the people of our Bible, those saints of old, were right there in front of me and a host of others out of the nation of Israel. Here come the waves, original intent concerning the testimony of Jesus. So it comes back to me. Again, I watch it as it goes to the earth. I turned and asked the Lord again, what will it take to bring Israel back to this intention? He turns again with those eyes of fire, Susan. Severe chastisement has been decreed for this nation. Two thousand We must know the time we're living in. The sons of Issachar knew the times in which they lived and what Israel was meant to do. What are we meant to do? We must know. God wants us to know. He'll speak to us. I'll declare what I'm meant to declare. I'm being really open. I can only imagine what's going on on live stream right now. <laughs> Nathaniel's probably back there fielding really wonderful statements along with curses and everything else. That happens regularly. But witches watch as well and listen. That's okay. Well, so I want us to turn now briefly to the book of Revelation chapter 15. In chapter 14, you'll note in verse 14 of chapter 14, and I, beheld, I looked and beheld a white cloud and sitting on the cloud 
was one like the Son of Man, having a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, crying out with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, put in your sickle and reap, because the hour to reap has come, because the harvest of the earth is ripe. This harvest of the earth is a bloodletting. It is Isaiah 63. 